This episode is brought to you by the law offices of Rene A. Flores. Hashtag DWI expert. Also, well, the Cowboys were knocked out of the playoffs. They played the Giants. We've got some highlights on that. Uh, the Giants beat them 23-19. to 19. Ronnie, what was your uh, take on that last game? What's, what do the Cowboys need, dude? I mean, they got to start They got to start off A games. Prayer? Well, it doesn't really matter now. I mean, I can't say, hey, you know, they need to do this, they need to do that. Cause well, shit, but for next but year, bro, I mean, you've got you – know, Well, you, you got to sign Dak. I think so. Um, you, you know, Dalton was doing well with them, but at the end of the day, you need a star quarterback – to control the team, so I think you pay Dak next year, depending how he comes off injury. Because what if what if he's still fucked up from the you know injury? And Dak can run, yeah, you know, exactly, which Dalton couldn't do. But um, and this, it's just the defense. I mean, the Gi- okay, in the three games before this, the Giants had scored. No, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. They scored two touchdowns in the last three games. Mm-hmm. In their last three games, they scored two only. The, th- the whole game, they scored three in just the first half against the Cowboys. I can't believe it because the defense was looking so good in the previous games. Dude. Yeah, they were doing well. But again, they start off slow. They put themselves in a hole. And then second half, they try to come back and they don't do it. Uh, but I mean, oh, that, they almost did. They almost did. But typical Cowboys, they driving, they're driving, they're driving. They get the big interception. They take the touchdown, but then they kick a field goal. And then the momentum kind of dies. And then they don't take you know the lead. But uh, Dalton was 29 for 47. He didn't throw a touchdown pass. He didn't run for a touchdown pass. He only threw for 243 yards and a pick. Zeke finally did get in the end zone. But even then, he had 14 carries for only 42 yards. Mm -hmm. You know, Cooper didn't show up. CD had a couple catches, but they just didn't put it all together. Um, That was telling me something about the coach not challenging a call. That 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 was exactly my next point. There was a... Uh, catch that the Giants had to get a first down. If they would have challenged it, you assume that they get the call reversed. Dallas Cowboys get the ball with a little bit of momentum and they have a chance to take the lead. McCarthy doesn't throw the challenge flag out. The Giants retain possession and, I mean, the rest is history. Yeah. However, though, we did get a huge break. We got the fumble hurt around the world when the Giants just needed to get a first down with the minute and 40 and the guy, the, the running back, Gallman from the Giants, his knee hits the ball. And he just fumbles it, and it's just there on the floor, and everybody's, you know, scramming, and the Cowboys come out with it, and we think, hey, the Cowboys got the ball. We got another shot. But one of the refs had already signaled Giants' ball. They reviewed it, and he did get the fumble, yeah. you know, recovered. But that was our chance right there. But why? Why can't we just take advantage of those chances? Well, that win wouldn't have mattered anyway because, uh, you know, the Washington football yeah. team was supposed to win that night, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, the Texans and the Titans, what a game, Ooh. dude. <sighs> game was incredible. We've got highlights on that game, and it came down to the wire. Yep. Um, the Texans looking good in their last game. The Titans heading into the playoffs. Uh, you know, did they have to win the game, the Titans? Well, they. I believe they were already in the playoffs, but if they won the game, they would have won their division, uh, and which they did. So they clinched the division since 2008. It was their first uh, division title, and... Tannehill was 18 for 20, uh, 18 for 27, 216 yards. He threw a TD. He rushed for two TDs. A lot of people think Ryan Tannehill can't run, but he's a great mobile quarterback. Of course, you talk about the Titans. You have to talk about Derrick Henry. 34 carries for 250 beast, yards with two touchdowns. He needed 223 yards in this game to run for 2,000 yards on the season, and he got 250. 50 yards. So he becomes the eighth player all time in NFL history to run for over 2,000 yards. We have a graphic yards. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he's and got some pretty damn good company. He's got some good company, is right. Uh, so the Titans finished 11 and 5 overall. They played the Ravens in the wild card next. Uh, and the way that they won, too, it was the doink hurt, yeah. <laughs> run, 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 doink hurt uh, all around the world. They hit uh, the late field goal. It doinked off the upright. Everybody thought he missed it, but it doinked in. And uh, the Titans. Uh, won their uh, they won their division and it's their first title since 2008. Yeah. Uh, I like them as a favorite coming out of the AFC to challenge the Chiefs. <laughs> the other game uh, that was on uh, was uh, Brady and the Buccaneers oh, versus man. the Falcons. Man. Brady and the Buc- 44 to 27. We have highlights on that. TB12, uh, the Fountain of Youth. I mean, this man does not. Dude, take a step back, Dad. He's man. crazy. Brady is yeah. uh, my. You know my. Respects to the guy. I never liked him or the New England <laughs> Patriots. 
But you got to like, give now credit. That, now that he's credit. with another team, right? You're it's like, like hey, different. Hey, Brady, si saca la daga al vato. Hey, Simon, <laughs> hey, don't let Brady. Yeah. Piche, champ. Y se trajo su, el, el zonk, o como se llama? El, no, uh, gronk. Gronk, gronk. Yeah, no, zonk. Of, You're thinking of a Scooby-Doo? <laughs> no. <laughs> Zoinks. No, I'm Zoinks. thinking of Larry Zonka. Oh. He no, was a running yeah, back for Florida. He was I mean, 26. Miami. He was 26 for 41. He threw for 399 yards and Damn. four touchdowns. Uh, his top receiver, Mike Evans, went out. But Antonio Brown stepped it up, 138 yards and two TDs. They ended the season at 11 and five. They play Washington like we talked about in the wild card next week. A little, a little, little knowledge dropper here as well. He Brady had an incentive mm -hmm. in his contract if he would have stayed in the top five passing court, uh, yards in the NFL, he gets a five hundred thousand dollar bonus. Yo, I don't wow. know. So why do you think he threw for 399 damn yards? He knew, man. Wow. He knew. I'm going to get $500,000 extra. All right. So let's go to the NFL wild card. Uh, and um, yeah, That's it's this weekend. Stuff. So we've got a graphic on that. Um, mm. The Bills and the Colts, man, at noon on Saturday. The Bills and the Colts. The Bills open That's up. That's going to be a good game, it's bro. It's going to be an awesome game. The Bills <laughs> open up at uh, six and a half point favorite. Uh, I like the Bills uh, first half to come out early, to come out swinging. And the over is 52 points. I like there are a lot of points to be scored. So uh, I like the Bills. Who do you like, Dad? Man, I, I'm going to think, uh, you know, I, I hope the Bills win too, man. Right? I, yeah, but, uh, but the quarterback from the Colts, dude, I mean, he's... Rivers? He's doing good, man. And he is, but, I mean, he's an old veterano. You know, I don't know if he can keep up with... He uh, has a decent team too, With uh, man, Josh Allen. He does, he does. Yeah. But this is the Bills' first home playoff win. Who has win. more weapons, Bills or, or the Colts? The Bills have Stephon Diggs. He was a leading receiver in yeah, the league good. this year. Uh, their quarterback is good. I mean, I'm sorry, their running back is good. Their defense is solid. Um, Colts don't have... Those standout stars, but all together, the defense, the offense, and the special teams come together, and, and uh, they do well. But this was the Bills' first home playoff game in 25 years. Their last home playoff game was when they were playing the Cowboys back yeah. in the late 90s. Yeah, they made so. it back to the Super Bowl before the Cowboys did. <laughs> or to the playoffs, at least. Yeah. But the playoffs, uh, yeah. yeah. Not the Super Bowl yet. Not yet. Yeah. But that game will be the first game on Saturday. Second game is Seahawks and Rams, man. Seahawks and Rams. Uh, yeah. Seahawks uh, opened up as a four-and-a-half point favorite, over under 42-and-a-half. I like this to be one of those low-scoring, back-and-forth defensive struggles. You know, so I'm going to take the under 42 points. I lean the Hawks just because of their quarterback, Russell Wilson. The quarterback from the Rams, Jared Goff, is hurt. He had thumb surgery this week. So I think uh, the Hawks edge out the Rams. What do you think? Uh, I think so, too. Uh, I, I think as the Rams have been kind of inconsistent this year. Yes, yes. But so have the Seahawks, man. So it, yeah. it's a toss-up, really. I think that's why it's going to be a defensive struggle. Whoever makes uh, the first big mistake, you know, probably lose the game. The Saturday night game is the Buccaneers versus Washington. Yes, sir. And uh, I think I... I I think I know who you're going to go for. <laughs> well, well, who is at your pick first, and then and then I'll close it Well, out. I'm thinking Buccaneers, dude. I mean, yeah. Washington, but I don't know. Those are two good quarterbacks. They, uh, but but yeah. Brady's got that. He knows the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, he's been there forever. Yeah, he, yeah, he's got the experience. Every year he was in the playoffs, dude. Yeah, yeah I mean, that guy is he, – my right now is arguably the best quarterback of all time. But anyway, Washington, uh, I'm sorry, the Bucks open up as an eight-point favorite. The over-under is 45. Um, a lot of guys in Vegas, though, Dad, they're taking Washington to stay within those eight points. Uh, Washington's defense is good. If you get Alex Smith, you know, back like they did last week, it was his first game back, so he was a little shaky. Uh, you know, the Bucks defense is good, but not great. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's going to be an upset, but I would kind of lean Washington in the points for another low-scoring game. All right, and then on Sunday, the first game is Ravens versus Titans. Oh, man, what an incredible game, huh? Yeah. Are you excited for that one or no? Well, I mean, uh, I, it's a toss-up as well. I mean, who, yeah. do you th who do you think is going to take it? I mean, Titans might win it, but I think Ravens might, uh, might, right? okay, might pull well, it out. I mean, I don't know, bro. This, well, this one has the lowest spread of all six games. This is uh, the Ravens opened up at only three-point favorite with the over-under of 55. I'm going to go out on the limb and take the underdog here and go with the Titans as a small lean. I'm going to go over 55 points because the Titans score a lot. The Ravens score a lot. Their defenses are okay, but they're not, you know, the past defenses that the Ravens have had with Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. Uh, 
the Ravens have the quarterback, you know, Lamar Jackson. He's an exciting guy. He can make a lot of things happen. So I like the over 55 and the Titans to pull off the upset here against the Ravens. All right. Bears versus Saints is the second game that night. Bears and the Saints. That day. This one actually has the highest uh, point favorite. The Saints are favored by 10. Yeah. Uh, the over-under is 48. I kind of see another low-scoring game here, so I'm going to go with the under. Um, we don't know if Kamara is going to play, which is the best running back on the Saints team. He's out because of COVID. They did. The game is on Sunday, so he would be eligible, but we're not sure yet. Uh, Drew Brees is a little older. The Bears' defense is solid, and their offense is, t is not very good, so that's why I like this to be a low-scoring game. But, of course, I'm going to take the Saints. Who do you got? Drew Brees, bro. Drew Brees. Drew All Brees. Right. Uh, yeah, and that's the second game on Sunday. All right, so the last game on Sunday night, it'll mm -hmm. be the Browns and the Steelers. Yes, yes. They played three times, I believe, in the last three or four weeks. However, this time the Steelers are going to be at full strength. They opened up as a four-point favorite, 46 and a half. I'm going to lean. Don't be surprised here, but I'm going to go with the Browns here, taking the four points on Damn. the Browns. Baker Mayfield's finally going to get over that hump, I think. You know, everybody says he's good, he's bad. He's going to put it all together. The Steelers' defense is probably going to win them the game, but I like the Browns to stay within the four points and a really, really close game. The weather's going to be super cold. I think it's going to be one of those old-school, you know, low-scoring games, and it should be fun to watch. All right. It is going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be a great weekend for football, the yeah. NFL. Yeah. And um, and let's not forget the Chiefs and the Packers have the bye, mm -hmm. so they won't be playing. But also, be still be fun. Um, before we uh, leave, we also want to congratulate locally uh, the Sherryland Pioneer. Ooh, what a team. run! Yeah. Uh, yeah. They went really deep into the state playoffs and they lost against Liberty Hill, fifty-six to fifty-three. Yeah, that was so close. And they, I mean, they were man hit hit to head Liberty Hill. I looked at it at halftime, and mm. it was like 42 to 40. It was like 80-some points in the first half. Yeah. Their I mean, games was, were very, very high scoring. Yeah. That was very interesting to see and a team from the Rio Grande Valley go that deep. Yeah, man. Sherry Land's got some studs. I know their their senior quarterback uh, is, I mean, probably one of the top in the nation. I think he was getting looked at as Mr. Texas. Uh, yeah. I remember He's going to UTSA, I think. Well, I remember uh, Landry Gilpin from Mission Veterans won that award. Yeah, he got it. He was the first ever from the Valley. And then this guy was considered also. So to have kids coming out of the Valley who are winning these awards or, or, or getting nominated for these awards is, you know, awesome. <laughs>